with macroeconomics, we're looking at the whole economy. So we look at the, the aggregated level. So we look at all sectors, all the whole economy. We look at all households. We look at all firms. So that is the main difference now. So we're not looking at individual units. We're looking at the aggregate level. So you will see from the topics we cover, we'll be looking at things like unemployment rate. So we're looking at the whole economy. We're looking at, we look today at GDP, how to measure economic activity in the whole economy. Or inflation rate, how to uh, monitor or to look at the uh, price level. <coughs> in uh, in the in the whole economy and, and and so on. So, for today's lecture, we will look at measuring economic activities. So, as an economy, as the whole economy, how would we know whether we're doing well or not? Do you remember what we said in the first lecture? Everyone faces economic problem. Everyone faces the economic problem. Doesn't matter how rich they are. All units face the economic problem. So let's go, let's go back to the basics. So what is the economic problem? Limited resources, unlimited wants. You see, that's the first lecture we had in this term. And we said all economic units face the economic problem. So individuals, firms, households, everyone, all the whole economy, all nations, and, and so on. So given that resources are limited, then we need to make the most of these resources. We need to use, to use these resources efficiently. So as an economy, our as the whole economy, we need to find a way to measure this performance. The economic performance, how we're using these resources, whether the economy is developing or progressing, or the economic activities, I mean, what is happening with, with the economy. So we need to measure, first of all, the economic activity. The question here is, how would, how would we do this? So given that we produce different, different uh, uh, goods and services. So if I want to know how much we produced last year, or the UK produced last year, then I need to look at all the goods and services produced last year. But this is not easy to do. Why? Because these goods and services are measured in different ways. So for example, let's look at, let's say we produced uh, apples and banana. So how would I add these together? So that's one problem. So how I add this to cars, we produce cars. How would I add this to Sorry. <coughs> so, how, how can I add these together? Apples and banana, uh, cars, whatever we produce. So one way to do this is to find like a common measure between all of these goods and services. One of these, or probably what we do, is we look at the market value. So how much we sell these bananas for, how much we sell these apples for, and then if we have this market value as the common uh, measure between all of these together, then we could add all these together 
and we can come up with a measure of the economic activity. So this measure is the gross domestic product or GDP. So the first thing we look at, that's what we're going to discuss in this lecture. What is GDP? What is the gross domestic product? How we measure it? And also, what are the limitations of this measure, GDP? So let's, let's first start with the definition. How we define GDP? gross domestic product, as I said, is the market value of the final goods and services produced within a country in a given year. And I'll explain each part of this uh, definition. So again, <coughs> as I said, we need to look at the market value. Why? <coughs> the very simple reason for that is I can't add different goods and services together given that they measure in different uh, measurement units, so I can't add them together. But I could look at the market value, I could add these together. So, so that's the first thing. So we look and add the market value, and as I said, we look at their uh, uh, prices in the market, because we can't add apples to orange, to computers, to cars, and etc. So, why are we looking at the final goods then? <coughs> we look at the final goods because if we include any intermediate goods, this will be double counting. Why? So let's think of cars. If we produce cars, and steel is one of the components, the inputs, uh, when we produce cars. So if I count the market value, if I calculate the market value for steel and cars, I will be double counting the value of steel. Why? Because the value of the car should include the value of the steel in this car as well. <coughs> so that's why we need to look only at the final goods. So we exclude the intermediate goods. And again, that is to avoid double counting problem. So always remember this example of cars and steel. So if we, if we count both, if we look at the market value for cars and steel, we now doubling, we, we double counting the, the steel because the steel is part of the car and, and, and that means it's part of the price or the market value of this car. So we should exclude the intermediate goods. We look only at the uh, final uh, final goods to avoid double counting. So that's the first two components in the definition. So we look at the market value and we explain why we look at the market value because we can't add banana to apple to orange to cars. So we need to look at one value, one, one, one measure. That's why we look at the market value. Then why we look at the final goods only? Because we want to avoid double counting the um, the intermediate goods and produced within a country that's why it's called domestic product it's very important to understand this it's GDB gross domestic product domestic here means it's produced within the UK doesn't matter who produced this so a Swedish company for example work in UK so the output produced by this Swedish company as long as is operating in the UK, it will be part of the UK GDP. If you have an American company working in UK, so then the output that this American company working in UK is going to be part of the UK GDP. So domestic here means the location. We're looking at where this was produced. Because this will, uh, this is different from the gross national product. GNP. So GDP is gross domestic product. GNP, look at the nationality. Okay? So with GDP, we don't care about the nationality. We, look, we, we care about the location. 
where this was produced. So domestic product, so GDP for UK means was produced in UK. Doesn't matter who produced it. Okay? Doesn't matter the nationality of uh, those who produce this output. As long as it is within the UK, happen in the UK, then it's part of the GDP, the UK GDP. Okay? And that's why it's called domestic product. At the last part, we, we look at this in a given uh, time period. Uh, usually it could be a year or a quarter of a year. So that's the definition. That's what is uh, GDP or what GDP is. So what GD, uh, GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. Could be a year or could be a quarter of a year. Okay. So how would we, how could we uh, measure GDP then? There are two, uh, there are three ways to measure GDP. We could measure GDP using the value added approach or the expenditure approach or the income approach. <coughs> so we'll use the uh, circle flow diagram to explain these uh, different approach. <coughs> so what is this? The circle flow diagram. Let's assume now that all units uh, in the economy could be under one of uh, these uh, sectors. Households, firms, government, and then the rest of the world. So we have three sectors, uh, four sectors. <coughs> so we can split the economy into four sectors, four groups. Households, firms, government, and the rest of the world. We'll start with a two-sector economy. So we'll assume first we have only two sectors, households and firms, and then we'll extend this to the case where we have three sectors, and then we'll move to the case where we have four sectors, which is a more realistic case. So again, we're now looking at the aggregate level now. We're looking at the whole economy. So we have households, firms, government, and the rest of the world. So let's look at the, the first example or the first case if we have a two-sector economy. It's not a realistic case, but let's just simplify things just to make it easy for us to understand, and then we extend this to the case when we have four, uh, four sectors. So with a two-sector economy, we say this is a closed economy because it doesn't deal with the outside world. Okay? So there's... It's a closed economy, it doesn't deal with the outside world, and it doesn't have a government. This is not a realistic case, this is the simplest way to look at this. And then we'll extend this to the other cases. So we would have two sectors, we would have only households and government, uh, sorry, households and firms. <coughs> so what does households do? The own factors of production. Do you remember what factors of production? What are these? Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. So these are the four factors of production. They are owned by households. And what they do, what else they do? They spend on goods and services. And this spending, we call it consumption. So what they spend is what households spend on goods and services is consumption. What, the, what do firms do? Firms buy or hire these factors of production and in return they pay to these factors of production, they pay wage, rent, interest, profits. So these are the incomes of these uh, um, uh, factors of production. And at the same time they produce goods and services, so that's the reason they hire or buy factors of production. So that's what firms do. So we'll see two different types of flows between these two sectors. So one, which is the physical uh, items, the, the flows of physical items. So we'll see factors of production going from households to firms. And goods will go from firms to household. The flow of money will be payment for inputs, so the money going from the firms to households in the uh, form of rent, uh, wage, interest, profit. This is the, these are the incomes for 
uh, factors of production. And the consumer expenditure, that's what households spend on consumption. That's con uh, the, the, on, on consuming goods and, and services. So to summarize this, this summarizes the whole picture. So what we have here, we have two sectors. We have households <coughs> and firms. So households own factors of production, and they give this factor of production to firms. So, so firms buy or hire these factors of production from households. And then firms produce goods and services. So this is the, these are the physical items, you see. And then goods and services go to households. Households spend, so in return they pay for these goods and services. So this is the consumption expenditure. Okay? So that's what households do. They spend on consumption. And firms, they do investment. And when they produce or when they hire the factors of production, they pay uh, the incomes for these factors of production in, in terms of wages, rent, dividends, or whatever this uh, income looks like. Okay? So how these, how the prices are set in this uh, uh, economy, these are, so the prices of goods and services will be set on the goods market. The prices for factors of production will be set in the factor uh, market. So we could change this um, slightly. We could look at, now we have the two, ha the two sectors, households and firms, but what we added here is the markets. So we have here factor markets and goods markets. So in goods markets, the price for goods and services will be determined in these markets. Factor markets will determine the income or how much the price or how much firms will pay these factors of production, how much they will hire these uh, uh, factors of production. So here, this blue line from firms to households, which has this symbol uh, Y, this denotes the, um, the goods and services going from uh, the output that is going from firms to households. And what does household do? What do households do? They spend on consumption. So the red arrow here show you the consumption expenditure. So when they receive the goods and services, when they buy goods and services, they pay uh, for consumption. What firms do, as I said, firms do investment. So they spend on investment. So now we have two sectors. Remember, this is not a, ver this is not a realistic case because in reality we have four sectors. We have households, firms, government and the rest of the world. We're going to look at this today, but now let's just focus on a very simple uh, case. And in this case, as I said, households spend on consumption and firms spend on, <coughs> on investment. So that means if we look at the left side, this side, the blue one, this is the output. So these are goods and services. So this should be equal what we spend on, <coughs> the spending on consumption and plus the spending on investment. So the spending on consumption comes from households and investment expenditure comes from firms. So these, this red should equal what we have in this blue. But to have this goes on the same level Households, they don't do, they don't consume 100%. They don't spend on consumption 100% of their income. What do, what else they do? They save. So households would save some money. So they're not going to spend 100% of their incomes on goods and services. So the problem here is or to have this flow going on at the same level. What households save, so they take away from this flow, should equal the investment that comes from firms. So whatever they save, it should be 
hand it to firms and these firms will investment so it will inject this again into the economy so as long as saving equal investment we will we will maintain the same level of equilibrium so this this flow will still will keep going at the same uh, the same level so that's the case where as i said this is the two sector case and that case GDP could be measured by the value of Y. So you look at Y. This is the value of the uh, goods and services. And we remember, we look only at the final goods and services. So we don't look at the intermediate goods. So, <coughs> so that's the added value or the val value added approach, which is the value of production minus the value of intermediate goods. Or we could look at the expenditure approach what do we spend? What, what are the expenditures here? Is what household spend on consumption, which is C, and what the firms spend on investment. So, in that sense, then GDP should equal, if we have two sectors, C plus I, if I'm looking at the expenditure approach. So, it's the sum of what these two. Uh, spend or the some of the expenditure that comes of, uh, come from these two sectors households and <coughs> sorry hand, uh, households and firms if you want to calculate the jdb according to income approach then you need to look at how much all the to to add up all the incomes in this uh, 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 in this economy so you add up rent wages and trust and plus profit so as I said, to keep this, to maintain the same level of equilibrium in this, so anything goes out of this flow in terms of saving, because as we agreed, households are not going to spend on consumption 100% of their incomes. So there will be some saving. So saving should equal investment. So when you save money, where do you put this money? You put it in the bank. What does the bank do with this money? Exactly. They lend this money to investors. They, they lend this money to firms. So if the saving equal investment, then we will maintain the same level of equilibrium. So this is the case of two, uh, uh, two sector economy. So if we have a three sector economy, we still have a closed economy, but this time we'll add the government. So in the previous uh, case, we looked at a two sector economy. So we had a closed economy without a government. In this case, we still have a closed economy. It doesn't deal with the outside world, but we have a government. So what does government do? Government will uh, buy goods and services. So they do government expenditure and they collect taxes. That's how they finance their uh, expenditures. And also they pay uh, financial transfers to household like unemployment uh, uh, benefits, etc. And they pay subsidies to, to firms. So what we look at is the net, uh, net taxes. So G in this flow represent the government spending. So let's look at, at the flow. So now we have the same. <coughs> the same. Uh, these are the household firms. We have the uh, factor markets. We have the goods markets. Here's the, uh, that's the output. So we look at the, all the final goods here, and here's the expenditures. So this is what households spend on consumption. This is what firms spend on investment. But now we have government. So government going to spend on what we call government spending. So they buy goods and services. So we will add to this flow G. So in that case, Y should equal C plus I plus G. So what is C? Is the consumption expenditure. What is I? Is investment. G is the government spending or government expenditure. So Y, that's the output or that's GDP, should equal, so if you, if you calculate GDP according to the uh, value added approach, and then 
Compare this to what we have if we calculate this according to the expenditure approach, then you sum up all these expenditures. So households spend on consumption, firms spend on investment, government spend government expenditure. So if you, get, if you, sum, if you add these together, then should equal, that should equal Y. <coughs> so to maintain the same level of equilibrium, we didn't see here taxes. So what happened when when, when, when households receive their, their incomes, what they do? They spend in consumption, but before spending in consumption, there's something will go to the, this is what, what, what government collects is taxes, okay? So then the after tax income now, so when, when they now they already pay for the tax, this is what will be available for, uh, for spending in consumption or saving. So, to maintain this level, we need to have the injections, which is the government expenditure. We have the leakages, which is, in this case, taxes and saving. So taxes go out of the flow, saving the same thing. So to maintain the equilibrium, we should have the sum of injections. So I plus G should equal S plus T. So what is S here? Saving. What is T? Taxes. So the sum of these should equal the sum of these. So I plus G should equal S plus T. And Y in this case will equal C plus I plus plus G. If we move to the more realistic case when we have an open economy. So in the last two cases we looked at closed economy where we have an economy that does not deal with the outside world. So now we have a more realistic case when we have an economy with three sectors, with four sectors, which means we have households, firms, government, and the outside world. So what do we do with the outside world? So you could sell goods and services to the outside world, and that's what we, we call export. So when you sell to the outside worlds. When you buy from them, these are imports. So what we look at is the net exports which is X minus M. So export minus imports. So X minus M here is the net exports. So <clears throat> if the net export is positive, that means export, you export more than you import. If the net export is negative, that means we import more than we export. Okay? So as I said, so that's, that's the, how we deal with the outside world is export and import, and we look at the net export, which is X minus, minus M. So let's go back to the circle flow diagram. So what we have here, we have the same sectors. We have households, firms, government, but we added the rest of the world. So what happened with the rest of the world? We have X minus M, or the net export. Here we go. So... Again, if you look at the way we measure the economic activity or the GDP, you could look at this. So this is the output approach. So that's the all final goods and services. Or you could look at the red part, which is the expenditure approach. So, so you look at the consumption plus investment plus G, which is the government expenditure, plus X minus M is the net export. Exactly. Okay? So this is, as I said, these are, this is the, uh, uh, the, the more realistic case when we have a four-sector uh, economy. And at the end, um, as I say, to maintain the same level of equilibrium, the sum of injections should equal the sum of leakages, which the injections here are investment, government, spending, and export. The leakages will be saving taxes and, and imports. So, and at the end of the day, the main point here is the how we measure GDP. So, Y, that's the GDP or the output, equal C plus I plus G, yeah, plus X minus M. So, this is, this is the case we have four, four sectors. So, as I said, you could look at this uh, flow, the circle flow diagram. You, if you look at the blue side, so you're looking at the GDP, <coughs> uh, looking at the output. If you look at the red side, you're looking at the expenditure 
uh, approach. And as I said, these are three different ways of measuring GDP, and they should give you, if there is no measurement error, they should be, uh, they should be the same because you're measuring, these are three different ways of measuring uh, the same thing. So output approach, income approach, expenditure approach. So going back to this, so that's the output, which is the value or the market value of all goods and services, the final goods and services. As I said, final is important because we exclude the intermediate goods. And on this side, the red one, tell you the expenditure approach. So if you add up these consumption plus investment plus government spending and uh, plus net export, that will give you, this should give you the GDP according to the, um, the expenditure, uh, expenditure approach. So one, one more thing to explain about the gross domestic product, GDP. So we know why it is domestic. Why, why is it domestic product? Exactly, exactly, because it's produced within the country. So that's why it is domestic. So now let's look at why it is gross. So as I said, we, we first know now we have three ways to measure it. So output, expenditure, income approach. So these are three different approaches to measure GDP. Okay, the way we explain this, we look at the uh, circle flow diagram when we have four sectors. So the, the, the point I'm adding now is related to why it is gross. The gross here means it's before de deducting the depreciation of capital. Okay? So depreciation of capital is the decrease in the value of a firm's capital that results from using this capital over, over time. So if you have a machine, so using this machine, that means it's not going to keep or maintain this, the same value over time. So this will depreciate or decrease. So and that is the difference between the gross investment and the, the net investment. So the gross investment is used to calculate the GDP, the gross domestic product. So we use the gross investment. And this is the total amount spent on purchasing new capital and on replacing depreciated capital. So we're not looking at the net investment. Okay? Okay. So that's why it is called gross so as I said before, these are the three different ways of measuring GDP. But in UK, the Office for National Statistics, ONS, used two approaches. Uses the expenditure approach and the income approach. So according to the expenditure approach, now we understand that GDP is the sum of aggregate expenditure in the economy. So what are these expenditure? Consumption, investment, government expenditure and net export so c plus i plus g plus x minus m also they use the income approach which is the sum of incomes so when you sum all the incomes in the in the economy this will give you the gdp according to the income approach so you could sum up all the incomes we have rent wages interest profits etc so whatever incomes we have and how these incomes are generated so when households hire or when when firms hire the uh, factor of production from households they need to pay them for this so they pay their incomes the income for these uh, factors of production and as we learned before rent wages so rent is for land wages for labor interest for capital profit for entrepreneurship so when firms hire these facts of production they pay in return these incomes so if you sum up all these incomes together you will obtain the GDP according to the income approach okay <coughs> so this is the uh, as I said this is the expenditure approach and this is the uh, um, the output approach or when you uh, add up all the final goods and services okay so now this this is just an example of how we look at the expenditure approach. So what you see here is the consumption, investment, government spending, X minus M is the net export. So what you need to do is to add these together. This will give you the gross domestic product, the GDB, according to the uh, expenditure approach. So you, you sum up 
consumption, investment, government spending, and uh, net exports. So you could also look at the income approach when you add up all the incomes together. So if you add whatever incomes you have together, this should give you the <coughs> this should give you the GDP according to the income uh, approach. So one more thing to say about the GDP is we could have the GDP at factor cost or the GDP at the market price. So the only difference here, so when you sum all the incomes, the, uh, you get the GDP at the factor cost. But if you add the indirect taxes and subsidies, subtract from this sub subsidies, this will give you the GDP according to the market prices. So let me show you uh, this example. So what we have here, these are all incomes. So when you add this together, you will obtain the GDP at factor costs. So remember, this is what we, ad we added all these together. This, all the incomes in this economy, so we add these together. This will give us the gross domestic product, the GDP, uh, according to the, uh, or at factor cost, which is this number. But to get this at the uh, uh, market price, then you need to, you need to add the indirect tax minus subsidies. And that's what we have in, this, in the rest of the example. So this is indirect tax, less subsidies. This will give you the GDP at market prices. Okay, so let me go back to the slide, this one. So that's the difference. So the difference here with the market prices, at market prices, we add indirect taxes and we subtract subsidies. Okay, so that's the only difference uh, here. One more thing to learn about the GDP. So when we look at the market value, we're looking at, uh, to, be, to be more precise, we're looking at the nominal GDP. So let me give you an example. If we, if you produce, uh, let's go back to these mics. So if you produce, le produce let's say, uh, 50 mics a year and we sell these mics just let's make it very simple we sell these mics for one pound each or let's say two pounds each so so we have 50 mics we sold this for two pounds each so how much is the GDP so let's assume that's all what we produce in this economy so how much is the GDP now so is the market value of all goods and services, all the final goods and services we produce. So Mike here is the final goods and services we produce. So the GDP will be 50 times 2 that will give us 100 pound. <coughs> so the next year we produce 50, so we produce the same, but this time we sold this for three pounds, not two pounds, three pounds each. So how much is the GDP? 150, so three times five. So what's happened here? Did we produce more? So we had 50 mics in, this year, in, in year one, and in year two, we still have 50 mics. So it looks very misleading now, because what's happened is, when you look at the figure 100 uh, 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 pound and then 150, you, would, you might think that the GDP has increased from year one to year two. But what has happened actually here is the price has changed. That's the market value. So when we look at the GDP that way, we're looking at the nominal GDP. Because we didn't, we don't take into account the change in prices. But this is somehow misleading because the prices change and, and also that will change the market value of these products. So in that case, we're not going to be actually monitoring the, just the economic performance or the economic activities because in my example, we had 50 mics. 
in the first year and the second year we still have 50 mics but when we look at the value we had like 100 pounds and then 150 so that doesn't make like doesn't make the economic activity difference is we what happened is here is just the prices have have changed from two pounds to three pounds for this mic okay so that's the problem with the nominal uh, nominal gdp so we need to look at the real gdp so in my case to calculate or in the same example to calculate the real gdp you use the price of one year which we call the base year so let's say the first year we're going to be our base year so 2 times 50 50 mics times 2 pound 100 the second year we know the prices are 3 but we're not going to use the price from this year we're going to use the prices of the base year which is 2 pound so 50 times 2 is 100 so the real gdp was 100 and it's still 100 so there's no change in the economic activity so we still have 100 okay so that is the in a very simple way, what real GDP is. So we used the prices from a base year. So rather than looking at the nominal GDP, so each year we're going to use the price from that year, no, we looked at the, we used the prices from a base year and we didn't change these prices. We see what happened to the GDP. So in this example, very simple example, we have 2010 in 20 GDP in 2010 and in 2014. So these are the quantities we produce from each one of these products, and these are the prices. Okay, so here you will see the GDP according to this. How do we come? How did we come to this hundred? So this hundred is the sum of the expenditure. So look at this. So we have 10, uh, 10 shares. So 10 times five, we spend 50. Computer chips, we spent 3 times 10, that's 30. So if you add these together, this will give you the GDP. And that's the nominal GDP because it's, it's, it uses the GDP, uh, sorry, it uses the quantities and the prices from that year, from 2010. So let's see what happened in 2014. So these are the components, these are the quantities, and these are the prices. This is how much we spend. So it's 4 times 5 give us 20. 2 times 20 get 4 and etc and then the GDP is the sum of these is 300 so this is the nominal GDP here is 100 the nominal GDP here is 300 so that might be misleading because you might think that now we have tripled the the economic activity so now the output so we jump from 100 to 300 so is this real we need to use a base the prices from a base year so what we would do in this case we and here to calculate the real GDP we're gonna use the quantities from 2014 but we're gonna make the prices of 2010 as a base year so 2010 as the base year so what you will see here is the quantities from 2014 but rather than using the prices from 2014 we use the prices of the base year. So you will see this is 5, 10, 20. You'll see 5, 10, 20. So these are not 5, 20, 30. So this is the prices from the base year. So now when we look at the real GDP, so the real GDP increased from 100 to 200, not 300. Okay? So, and that is the idea here. So when you look at the nominal GDP, it might be misleading because it is affected by the inflation or the increase or the changes in the price. When we look at the real GDP, we use the prices from a base year. So we isolate or we take this out like the price effect. So the, there's no effect for the prices. So what actually happened here is real GDP. It's what happened, what actually happened to the economic, uh, uh, to, to the output or to the economic activity. Okay? So the only difference in this, when we looked at uh, the real GDP in 2014, we used the quantities from 2014 and the prices from 2010, which is our uh, base year. Yeah. Okay. So that's exactly the difference. So it's very important to understand the difference between the real and the nominal GDP. The last thing I'm going to finish with, which uh, is the limitations for this. 
So first of all, we already covered this, the real versus nominal GDP. So we understand the difference. Okay? So if we look at the nominal GDP, it will be misleading because it includes also the uh, inflation effect or the, 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 the effect coming from changes in the price. Remember my example about the mics? We have 50 mics, two pound each, that give us 100. 50 mics, 300 each, uh, three pound each, that give us 150. So nothing happened to the output level. We're still selling, we're still uh, producing 50 uh, mics in both years. And if we look at the nominal, it will tell us that it, it might it might be misleading because we might you, we may think that the output has increased from 100 to 150, which in fact uh, not true because that what happened is just the price change. And we look at how to deal with this is to not rather than looking at the nominal GDP, we we look at the real GDP. How to do this? We use the prices from a base year, so, and we don't change these prices. Then we use the quantities from different years, and then we calculate the uh, real GDP. Also, the population size. So, how you compare a nation with uh, uh, millions or uh, like China with billions of people with the economic activity or the, the output from another nation, like a small nation. So, the national or the, 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 the population size could be one of the limitations of using GDP. That's why we use the per capita GDP. So, the per capita uh, uh, real GDP, so basically you consider the population size. Also, how would we compare the GDP coming from um, or calculated for different countries using different uh, currencies? Then we use the exchange rate, the purchasing power parity, PPP, which um, the uh, exchange rate which would buy the same good in each country. So this is another way to deal with or to make these uh, kind of, uh, of comparisons. Uh, one of the other problems with the uh, uh, GDP is when we define GDP, we said the market value. So we look at the market value. So what about the items that are not included in the market, that doesn't enter the market? Like unpaid work or undergrad, underground economy. Have you ever heard of this? term, underground economy. So what does it mean? I heard yes from the side. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just take, took it back. <laughs> okay, so the underground economy. Okay, if, if, you, um, if, you, if you do any transaction, but you don't have any uh, receipts or any, uh, so anything that we do, we doesn't have any um, record so it's outside it's off record so we, we we don't have any proof of this so that is underground economy okay so it uh, doesn't matter it is legal or, or or legal but as long as you don't have this receipt so there's no there's no uh, proof that this transaction has happened so that's why it's underground economy because it's very difficult to uh, to track it if, uh, to trace it because it's there's no uh, evidence or there's no proof that it has happened so anything off record so this is, this is called the uh, unrecorded uh, uh, economic activities. So anything that doesn't have record or is not included in the record, so that means uh, uh, it's underground economy. So also GDP doesn't uh, uh, reflect the quality of life. It doesn't uh, also reflect the uh, distribution of income. So we could have a higher um, high GDP or the GDP is growing, but at the end of the day, we only few people who enjoy this. So the distribution of income. So let's say we all, this is the economy, we, the, 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 we have like 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds. So my share of this 1,000 pounds is 800, and your share is 200. So you see, it doesn't, so in total, yes, we have the uh, uh, 1,000. But the distribution of this income among us is not reflected by the GDP. So this is one of the other limitations uh, for GDP. So these, the limitations uh, of, uh, of GDP. So in this lecture, we define the GDP. We know how to calculate the GDP according to um, 
income approach, expenditure approach, output approach. And we look at uh, how to explain this using the circle uh, flow diagram when we have four sectors, households, firms, government, and the rest of the world. So remember why? Because this equation will, will stay with us for, for a while. So y equal C, C is, these are the sum of the expenditures, yeah? So C is the consumption expenditure. So C plus I plus G plus X minus, minus M. And we, uh, at the end, we looked at the, the limitations of uh, real GDP uh, as a measure of uh, economic uh, well-being. Do you have any questions? Any question?